This video is a quick demonstration of cookies in the browser and session attributes on the in the server for Java servlet, so for using Tomcat or Jetty, in this case using Jetty. So what I've got open in front of you on the video at the moment is IntelliJ, which is an, a development environment that is going to do some auto-completion for me and save me some typing. And in it, I have a very simple Hello World servlet. So this servlet is mapped to the URL slash greet. And all it does is it gets the request request.get parameter of name. So it gets the name parameter from the query string, or if there isn't one world and decides, okay, that's the name that you want to greet. It sets the response status to 200, which is okay. The content type to text plane, and it prints out a greeting, which is hello, followed by the name. So that's just going to say hello world or hello Bob, etc. So let's run this using Gradle, and I'm using a particular plugin that's going to let me go Gradle app run and uh, compile and launch my servlet, my web application uh, in Jetty. And there's another line of the output that I'm going to show you just to explain something um, as soon as it starts up, which is right here, enabling hot deployment with interval of one second. So this particular plugin that I'm using to be able to do Gradle app run, as well as starting the code in Jetty, it is also scanning my source code to see if I've made any changes. And if it sees that I've changed my source code, it's going to automatically recompile and restart my web application so that I don't have to manually stop it and redo Gradle app run. So that's going to save me a little bit more time in the video. So let's pop across to the browser now. Here is Mozilla Firefox, and I have the developer tools open to the network tab. And so let's go and make a request to localhost 8080 webproj greet. And it says, hello world. And here's the, uh, the data on the particular web request that it made. Uh, so 200 response, and if I click on it, we can see that it sent down various request headers, accept, accept language, accept encoding, connection, but there's no cookies in the request headers it's sending down yet. And in the response, there's some various headers coming back, content length, content type, date, server, Jetty 9.2.1, uh, but there's no set cookies in the response yet. So if I also go over to the cookies tab, no cookies for this request, but if I go over to the response, there's the hello world response. Okay. So next, uh, well, let's just uh, show that it's working. Let's go greet name equals Bob, and it's going to say hello, Bob. Uh, but again, there's no cookies in the headers yet. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my source code, and I'm going to make a little bit of a change. Now, because cookies are set in the headers, I need to set them uh, before I start writing the response, because in HTTP responses, the headers are written before the response. So I'm going to need to do this up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the session, HTTP session. And let's let IntelliJ autocomplete that for me and do the import for me. Session equals request dot get session. And for the moment, I'm just going to save that. So I'm just going to get the session which is going to mean that Jetty will need to create a session for me. And when it creates the session, that session is going to have an ID, and it is going to want to set the session ID in a cookie in the browser. So we should, uh, we should now see some cookie headers happening. So if I go over to the console, uh, it should have, I, um, it looks like it has recompiled it and restarted it. So let's now go back to the browser. Let's redo this request. And this time, let's look at the request. And in the request headers that we've sent down, there's no cookie. But in the response headers that's come back, there's this set cookie header, J session ID equals, there's the session ID, which is a, a lot of characters and would be very, very hard to accidentally guess. And if I go over into cookies, sure enough, the response cookies, it's, uh, it's parsed that as being the J session ID cookie is set to this value. So now that cookie has been set in the browser. And so if I make this request again, we should see that cookie being sent down to the server. Uh, so let's go and make that request again. 
And this time, if I look at it, in the request headers, cookie j session ID equals, and it's sending the, the session ID down to the server. And this time in the response headers, there's not a set cookie because, well, we'd already got the, the cookie with the session ID set in the browser, so the server didn't need to tell us to set it. So that, um, and now if I go over here, cookies, sure enough, request cookies, j session ID, and there's the value. So that's shown um, how, as we create a session on the server, it sets the session ID in a cookie in the browser. Let's go and store some session attributes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go session dot set attribute, and I'm going to set the session attribute last to the name that we're asking it to greet. And so now it should, when I make the request, it should remember in the session who I've just asked it to greet. And let's use that. So before I go and set that, let's get what it was last time. So let's go string last equals session dot get attribute of last. And I should get a compile error. And indeed I do. And that says incompatible types required string found object. So I can set attributes to be objects uh, in, in, the, in the session data. Um, so when I go get attribute, it knows it's an object, but it doesn't know it's a string. Now, normally it would be kind of dangerous practice just to go and cast that because, well, we don't actually know that, um, that that's what was set. Uh, normally you'd want to do some kind of an instance of check before the cast, but this is just a little video and um, I, I've and I, I know that I've just set it to a string. So just for the for the purposes of this video, we just we'll just cast that to a string. And now down here, after we've written out the greeting, we're going to say response.getwriter dot println of last time you asked me to greet plus last. And let's save that. And so what that should do, the first time we go through this, well, the first time we have an empty session because um, although I created the session last time before I made these code changes, uh, I haven't yet set the last attribute. And so when it goes to get the value of the last attribute, it should be null. So the first time through, it should end up saying, last time you asked me to greet null. But also the first time through, it's going to set that session attribute to be whichever name that I greet. So the second time I go through, it should tell me whoever I greeted last time. So let's see if that uh, see if that's happened. Uh, that looks as though it's re restarted the server. Let's find out. So let's remove the name. And so we should get hello world last time you asked me to greet null. And indeed we do. Hello world last time you asked me to greet null. And because the server's restarted, well, actually, it's created a new session. So uh, it sent the session cookie from last time. But actually, this time it's created a new session. But it's a new empty session that doesn't have anything set within it. So this time, let's go and greet name equals Bob. And we should get, hello, Bob, last time you asked me to greet world. Hello, Bob, last time you asked me to greet world. Um, but so the thing to notice is it's storing that data in the session on the server. And the session ID is telling Jetty kind of which session to get to, to look the attributes up in. Uh, so we're storing some data down on the server, but we have a session ID set in a cookie up in the browser helping us to refer to it. Now, obviously, this means a few things. So it means, for instance, that we are now storing some state, uh, some transient state uh, in our server. So, for instance, if I was to go and cause that server to restart again and to create a new session, uh, let's do that by just making a code change, saving it, and now we should see uh, Gradle restarting the server. And if I go back to the uh, back to the browser and I make my request, it should give me a new session. It, it should be back to saying, last time you asked me to greet null again. 
and indeed it is. Hello, Bob. Last time you asked me to greet Null. So we've now created a, a stateful server that is just remembering some, some, uh, some data for the life of that session. And um, it's, it's going to be a de design decision as to whether or not you want to do that. Um, some occasions where people don't want to do that is, for instance, if you want to be able to start up lots and lots of servers on demand and be able to route requests to whichever server has the shortest queue to do load management, that's easier to do if the servers aren't stateful, if you don't have to worry about finding the one that has their session on it. But generally it's going to be a design decision. And this was just a little quick demonstration of how uh, cookies hold the session ID in the browser and we can also set session attributes in the server.